Welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at how to represent error in views. Sometimes when we have data, we don't know precisely the values we have. For instance, we may have some uncertainty in our measurement, or we may have run multiple trials that each yield slightly different results. Then we want to display what that looks like in a simple and easy to understand manner. And doing so usually involves using error bars. And so today we're going to look at how to access and represent those error bars in views. So let's just jump right in. I already have some data loaded in, data that comes from measurements that has been performed in my own group. This data looks like this, where I have over time run four different trials of measurements. And if I were to plot all of these, perhaps in X, Y, what I would have is time, and then I could represent one, and then copy this and say two, three, and four. And what we would see is that even though many of these appear in similar places, at no point in time do they really overlap exactly. And that means that there's some spread in the values that are represented here. And it might look a little busy to try to represent it all like this, somewhat hard to see the points. And of course, we could simplify this to some extent by making the points smaller, but it can be hard sometimes to see them if we make them small enough to be able to see the differences between them, especially when they're very close together in values. And so a more common approach instead would be to calculate the mean position of these four values and then represent the spread in those values using some other measurement like the standard deviation. And so let's just go ahead and have this single plot where we're gonna plot the average or the mean values. If we go back, ah, ah, we still need time on the X. And then we can plot the mean values on the Y. And what you'll see is as soon as I did this, some error bars started to appear. If I go back and look at the data to understand what's going on, I've taken the average of one, two, three, and four and calculated it here is the mean. Then I've indicated plus minus values, which views interprets as being the error. So when views is scanning across, it sees a column with numbers. And if the next column has a plus minus, then that indicates to views that our errors are symmetrical about that number. And so this is the standard deviation in these values here, as I've calculated it. Each of these points has a bar, just like we see here. And where do those appear? Well, if we go to formatting for our scatter plot, what we see is that I have a selection of error style. And here we have bar, but we could have something like bar ends, where you would see the end of the bars like this instead. And you can even start to see them poking out here. There's other options like box, which won't show anything because we would need to have errors both in X and Y in order to use these other indications of error. So for us, we're gonna use just bars or bar ends. And I'm gonna select bar ends. In order to be able to see them all, I'd have to make the point marker smaller. So what if I said one point? Now you'd see I have tiny little circles with error bars around them. And one thing that happened immediately is that the width of these bars shrank as I shrank the size of this point. And so that's something to keep in mind, right? This is wide, just as wide as the point is. And then when I change this down to one point, it shrinks to be just as wide as the point is again. How do I control the error bars a little bit more precisely? Well, I can go to the error bar line tab. And here I can control things like its color. So I could have this be, for instance, blue. I could also choose for this to be dotted instead, which looks terrible, but it gives you the option. I can individually control the thinness of this. So if for some reason I would like to have thinner error bars, then I have points. One could easily do that. In general, because of our rule of consistency, I think we should keep things the same thickness and the same color as the points that they're associated with. Unless, again, we have a good reason not to. Just as with anything else, we could make these semi-transparent if we choose, and then we could see behind them 
For instance, if we had several error bars that somehow overlapped. We don't need that here. We could choose to hide it, and we can choose the size. A size of one simply means that this is the same size as the point. So if I double this, then I will have error bars that are twice as wide as the point is, even if I go back and change the marker size. So if I now go back to a three point marker size, you'll see that I've still maintained that the end size is now twice as long still, or twice as wide as the point. And so that's an easy way for us to control something and also be able to see what the error is even when the point is too large, if we just simply extend the bar ends. Of course, that only works if we have bar ends. If I just have bars, then we don't see them. So let's go back again to having one point. Other options are that we could choose to hide the horizontal and vertical bars separately. So for instance, if I had horizontal bars, I could click here and it would hide them. If I click here, it'll hide just the vertical portion, but would preserve any errors along X. Okay, so that's how we control the format of these bars. The last thing I want to say is that in views, we also have the ability to specify asymmetric error bars. So let me go ahead and insert another column. I'm going to just multiply this by two. And now I should have error bars or numbers here that are twice as large as the numbers here. What I could do in views is indicate that perhaps the first column are positive numbers and the second column is the negative error. And what you'll notice is in both cases when I've input these values, I had to put a space first and then the minus sign. It is probably best to just always include the space since views will ignore that. So now let me go in and I could refresh the data and now it will read the positive values from that first column and the negative values from the second column, which is larger by two. And so now when I refresh and hit close, you'll see that the negative errors extend farther than the positive errors do. And so that's how I could express if I have different negative and positive errors in views. Now, the last thing to say is if I don't want to have error bars, there's a few things that I could do. One, and probably the best, is just to go in and hide the error bar style, either by saying no error bars, or by going to the error bar and then hiding it, or just the portions that we want. However, you could also give each one of these columns some other value, like for instance, up, and low, meaning upper and lower, and now views will not recognize those as error bar styles. And so if I go back here and I turn back on the error bar by unhiding it, you'll see that when I refresh and read from that file, my error bars have disappeared because views no longer recognizes those two columns as being error bars. And instead, now I have new entries in my data that are up and lower. And so these are different ways to control the error representation in views. You would see the same ability to supply error bars if we had done something like instead of having a scatter plot, we had had a bar chart. And my bar chart was perhaps the mean. I could still have error bars associated with that mean. As you can see here, I have a tab that says I should be able to have error, or at least control the formatting of error. So now if I go back and say this column is my error column, and then I hit refresh, you'll see that I now have error associated with each one of these. And I have the same level of control over the error on the bars if I choose. For instance, instead of having the bar, I could have the bar ends, and then go in and also control this how I like. And that's it. This is how we put error representations into views, and it's an effective and standard way of doing so. And so now hopefully if you have data where you have multiple measurements and you'd like to simplify the representation by using error bars, or you have measurements where you know what the error in each measurement is, you have the means by which to represent that in a way that another person can understand simply.